Well, um, what I do is, is look at how we govern inter, uh, various emerging technologies. And uh, my two main areas of focus is using sort of non-traditional, what I call soft law mechanisms, where statutes and regulations and traditional hard law just isn't able to move fast enough to keep up with these new technologies. And at the conference today and yesterday, I've heard a number of examples where that same problem is being experienced here in India, that the technology moves much faster than the law can move. And so um, the type of research I do is look at other types of things like codes of conduct, best practices, uh, private standards that can keep up with the technology much better than traditional law, even as an interim measure. So I think that's a, a very important tool that a country like India would want to be looking at to deal with these very fast moving technologies. And then the second thing I do a lot of work in is sort of international coordination. That we live in a global world, a global marketplace, and it's really important for countries to be talking with each other and looking for mechanisms to try to coordinate as much as possible. Every country is different. Every country is going to have its own laws and its own preferences of technology. But there's a lot we can do to try to coordinate as much as we can. And so I look at for mechanisms of that, which will benefit every country, that other countries will benefit from India's uh, you know, experience, and, and India can benefit from other countries, uh, what they do. Where genetic research is right now is it's really coming to a, a bit of a crunch in terms of ethnicity. That um, there are no specific genes that are specific to any race or ethnicity, but different groups have different proportions of genes. And so when we try and do studies of safety, of risk, and uh, drug safety and so on, um, we find we're getting different results in different places. And that's because we're looking at the population as a whole and how they respond to, say, a drug or to a disease risk. Um, but as we go forward, we're going to be able to move beyond that by looking at the specific genes. And so someone in India with this particular gene will be the same as someone in Canada or Brazil with that same gene. And so what we want to do is be able to move beyond this crude thing called race or ethnicity and look at the specific genes that are present in each population. Um, and so I think uh, the more countries that participate in this kind of thing and bring their own sort of diverse genetic heterogeneity into the discussion will give us more information to help every country because there's people in every country who has some of the same genes as people in India and vice versa. They're just there in different proportions. So to the extent we can move beyond those crude estimates of, of, of race and look at the specific genes, we're going to learn a lot more. And that requires everybody to participate in as many different diverse countries as possible. So India, with I, I think, is now the biggest population in the world, has a lot to contribute to that. I think it's very exciting. I think um, you know what the Carnegie uh, India is doing of trying to expressly ad address this issue of, of how policy deals with the technologies and trying to be sort of a coordinator of that is just incredibly important and, and really sets a model that I haven't seen in any other country, including the United States, to sort of take that on you know, very directly uh, across all these interesting technologies. You see different groups in different countries addressing specific technologies, but what you're trying to do here is look across the landscape of all these different technologies and how they interact and, and what are the commonalities and the governance of them. And I think that's just so impressive and so cool that you're doing that in such a, a direct way. So I'm very impressed and very jealous that you're doing that here.